Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So a lot of people with calisthenics run into the issue of not actually being able to maximize their muscle growth in the shortest period of time with calisthenics. So I wanted to explain to you fully in this video the different reasons as to why you are not building muscle with calisthenics because there's a lot of people that just make so many different mistakes that they're not aware of and they blame the calisthenics for not growing their muscles and they say you need to do bodybuilding to maximize your muscle growth and actually grow muscles all together which is a load of misinformation at least when it comes to building muscle with calisthenics you may be not be able to get the biggest muscles possible with calisthenics unless you do it in a specific way more so with weighted calisthenics and really hard consistent intermediate calisthenics exercises but yeah i'll explain the different reasons to you as we go along in this video before i start i just want to mention one thing i'm going to put a link up above for a playlist which is how to start calisthenics as a beginner and those videos show you different types of exercises how to execute calisthenics exercises correctly how many reps to do how many rounds and all the other different bits of information that you need to get calisthenics to work the best use you can go in the direction of gaining and maintaining the body side the fitness levels and the energy levels as well and i will have new videos being added to that very very soon so yeah if that interests you definitely go and check out that playlist above so yeah let's get on with this video shall we first i want to say sorry if there's any background noise i can't avoid it completely and yeah the lovely sun has just come out to greet us and make us feel absolutely amazing and alive and give us that vitamin d to make you feel absolutely wow so yeah the first and most common reason that i see people are not maximizing their muscle growth with calisthenics and yeah I see this pretty much every single day that I go to the gym locally where I train in Chiang Mai, Thailand where I currently live and that is not doing full reps. You may be thinking well what are not full reps? So I'm going to do a little demonstration here with you now and yeah I'm sure you've probably seen this a lot and yeah a lot of people just are unaware of this because unlike myself and many other people that are more advanced with calisthenics they don't necessarily learn from people how to do calisthenics correctly and I've watched so many YouTube videos and listened to many podcasts and other various things to learn so I can get the greatest results and do it with the most optimal form without injuring myself as well. So yeah, with a pull up for example, when you do a pull up you want to do it all the way with full range of motion. So up until just above your chin with the bar and all the way down. So that's like a full range of motion. But what I saw someone doing yesterday, and I see this one specific man do it all the time in the gym, they do things like this. So they may come up, go like this. That is not full range of motion at all. It's really bad, it doesn't look cool either. Or they might do ones where they come up and they go down like this. Up, down, up, down, up, down. You may be wondering, well, why am I not going to be able to grow my muscles as much as you possibly can with calisthenics when you're not doing the full range of motion? Well, for example, when I switch more to a chin-up because I can feel the engagement more in my muscles when doing this compared to the pull-up, if I'm just doing like these small reps like that, I can feel it's not engaging the muscles in my arms as much as possible. And when you're doing pull-ups, it engages your biceps a lot more than your triceps. So yeah, when I'm doing the full range of motion like this, I can feel it way more in my biceps rather than doing these really not full reps whatsoever that just look ridiculous as well at the same time. So that is the number one reason why, but there's also other reasons as well that I'm gonna to explain to you. So make sure if you're new to calisthenics, you don't know how to do a calisthenics exercise with perfect form, research up online and find youtube videos or blogs or even listen to podcasts of people explaining how to do them or get a coach to help you or someone that you know that may be advanced with calisthenics and knows what they're doing so you can make sure that you're performing calisthenics in the most optimal form so you can also reduce your risk of injury and get the greatest muscle growth benefits at the same time and also increase your strength 
and stamina, endurance and fitness at the same time. And yeah, all these things I'm sharing with you is stuff that I've just become aware of on my calisthenics journey, which I've been doing for over a year now. And all these various tips I'm gonna share with you so you can optimize your muscle growth with calisthenics, I've learnt with myself on my own calisthenics journey. And for me personally, I went from very, very skinny, weak and frail to gaining over 10 kilos of muscle with calisthenics and then be able to do such exercises known as dragon flags and muscle ups and these harder calisthenics exercises. So I went from weak and frail to being very strong and ripped and muscular and just increasing my overall sports performance and fitness levels at the same time. And what I'm gonna do is put a link for my video up above where I show you my whole year calisthenics transformation in case you are interested in that and you can see what type of results you can expect to get with calisthenics if you follow the information that I share with you in this video and other various videos that are on calisthenics. The second reason which I'm going to share with you, some people are going to agree with, some people are going to disagree, there's a lot of different scientific research out there that can conflict each other but I'm going to share with you from my own personal experience what I've learnt from people that have got the results and then I've got the results from them sharing the information with me on this next tip that I'm going to share with you and this thing I'm going to make you aware of. So what I see again a lot of the time in the gym is people doing really fast reps which fast reps will help maximize your endurance and stamina which means you can go for very very long periods of time it's like the difference between being a sprinter and a marathon runner if you want to be like a marathon runner but equivalent with calisthenics then do really really fast reps so also what I need to mention is if you're going to be a power lifter, power lifters lift really heavy things for small amounts of reps. But if you want to do specific hypotrophy training, then what you want to do is around a 6 to 12 rep range. And you don't want it to be too easy. But yeah, I'll go into that in more detail because I'm skipping ahead a little bit. But yeah, what most people end up doing is really fast reps. So let me move back a little bit here. So a lot of people like this. Ooh which is definitely engaging my arms but from what I learned it doesn't maximize muscle growth there seems to be a noisy tractor in the background hopefully you can't hear that so yeah what I've found from my own personal experience and what I've learned is doing around a 6 to 12 rep range and doing it with a moderate amount of speed where it's challenging you so when you get to the first four to six reps it should be very challenging for you. If it's not challenging for you with the calisthenics exercise you're doing, you need to make it harder and do a modified, harder version of it, or do a different exercise completely. So for example, when you get into calisthenics, you're more than likely gonna find push-ups hard, but then once you can do over 12 easily, and it's not too much strain on your muscle or your body, then you wanna be doing things such as archer push-ups, or wide push-ups and all of these other different push-ups to challenge you a lot more and they're a lot harder for you. So I'm gonna show you the type of speed that I would do it at. So for me personally, I would go at speed just like this. So it's not too slow and it's not really, really fast either. But yeah, it's already challenging me quite a bit and obviously with dips, the lower you go down, the harder it's gonna be. So now I'm going to give you a demonstration of the type of speed that I would do my reps with pretty much every single exercise. So yeah, not really really fast like this at all, not really slow like this, but yeah, at a moderate speed with really good control, really good perfect form and already with three reps it's already challenging me quite a bit. So, yeah, you really want it to be intense on your muscles. And I do train people at various times in the gym. There's someone that I train around four times a week at the moment, have been doing so for months. And sometimes when I get her to do certain exercises, she finishes it or she gets into quite a few reps. And she's saying it's not hard enough. So I get her to do a harder calisthenics exercise that challenges her. So after you've done the full exercise, you should be feeling your muscles feeling quite achy, so to speak. And you should feel that burn, as a lot of people say. And you should be 
breathing quite heavily and feel that it was quite a challenge. And you want to be doing that with every single different exercise that you're doing. And do what I do, which is making sure with each exercise that I'm pretty much doing it to failure. And if you don't know what to failure is, say for example, I'm going to do 12 reps with dips. I want to get to a point of when I'm almost at the end of those 12 reps where I can hardly finish it whatsoever. So if I'm doing the reps, like so, and I find I'm getting to around six reps and it's not that hard, what I will do is slow down the motion even more of each rep that I'm doing with the calisthenics exercise. And this is absolutely key to maximize your muscle growth because it's gonna tear the muscle fibers as much as possible. So again, just with the number one tip and the first tip I gave you, is in that rest and recover period, it is gonna allow your body to maximize the muscle growth after the training that you've done with calisthenics. So this is something I cannot stress enough. So about 24 hours after whatever workout you're doing with calisthenics, your muscles that you have worked on specifically, say you've been doing an ab workout, your abs within about 24 hours after that workout should be aching a lot and you should be able to touch them. It should be quite painful for you to touch them. Because if not, you have definitely not trained hard enough. So next time you do that workout, make it even harder for you. And if my muscles aren't aching within about a 24 hour period afterwards, then I'm just not happy because I know that I didn't do my workout hard enough and correctly to tear the muscle fibers as much as possible to maximize the muscle growth of my muscles. And yeah, I made this mistake very early on in my journey. It slowed down my progress with gaining muscle within that one year period. So I could have gained more muscle mass in a shorter period of time and within that whole year period. And I talk about that more in depth, which I put a link for the video up above in case you're interested in that, in case you want to learn more about that specific thing. So this next one, which I see time and time again, is not resting and recovering enough. Because if you're not resting and recovering enough, how are your muscles going to repair fully and actually grow fully? It's not. So it's all about train really hard, rest and recover. Refuel with food, make sure you're sleeping enough, looking after yourself as much as possible so then you can get the best muscle growing benefits. And a lot of people just tend to want to train, 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 train. A lot of people can try and do that every single day. But most people that train every single day, especially if you're not a high level calisthenics athlete, you're not actually training hard enough. So make sure you're training harder as I mentioned on, on earlier in this video. And what you're doing as well by resting and recovering you're also just going to be increasing your strength more over time because if you keep training and training and training your strengths are just going to start to go down you're going to be overstimulating your nervous system too much burning out your adrenals too much which then is going to have a negative effect on your hormone production such as testosterone and human growth hormone which is key for maximizing your muscle growth and yeah it's just a lot of people especially people in the western world that just want to go 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 and they don't know when to stop and yeah i used to be someone like that and it's not a good idea at all so the fourth one and a lot of people hear this time and time again there's a lot of mixed information on this subject that i'm about to go on which is the number four reason of why you're not growing muscles with calisthenics and that is not eating sufficient calories and not enough protein you don't necessarily need to go and track your calorie intake or your protein, but just be very aware around the foods that you're eating and just make sure you're eating a substantial amount of protein. You don't need to eat excess amounts of protein. There's loads of different scientific research out there saying that it's all different types of amounts of protein you need a day to give you optimal nitrogen balance, which is key for growing your muscles and repairing your muscles at the same time. But I've seen some scientific research out there that shows you need as low as 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which for me is around 100 grams of protein a day. And I've also seen scientific research that shows you can't absorb more than 30 grams of protein within one sitting. And when you're someone that trains a lot and you're someone like myself that has very high level of fitness, you actually become 
a lot more efficient at using the protein that you're consuming. So you actually need less protein than what a lot of people believe out there. And what it says is a lot of the scientific research and information out there saying you need insane amounts of protein, like hundreds of grams of protein or two grams of protein per pound of body weight is normally coming from people that are trying to sell you protein-based supplements and protein powders and foods and so forth as well. So when you look in scientific research with this type of subject, find out who's actually funding them because they normally have a vested interest in telling you that you have more protein to maximize their profits from the things they are trying to sell you that are protein-based. But what I will say is if you're someone that is not eating multiple meals a day and you're doing intermittent fasting. One of the most common methods out there is the 16 8 intermittent fasting method where you eat two meals a day, fast around 16 hours a day, normally on water or black coffee or other drinks that don't break you out of a fasting state, or even one meal a day like I eat. You don't necessarily need to be getting 100 grams of protein, which I explain in the fifth and last reason that I found for myself and yeah, what I found through a lot of scientific research to optimize my hormone production, such as insulin, human growth hormone, and testosterone, which is key for maximizing your muscle growth. And the way I'm gonna show you to do that in the next tip is completely natural and free, and you don't need to go be buying these expensive pharmaceuticals and getting the chemical versions of them that just have a load of unwanted short-term and long-term negative health consequences and side effects. So first off, before I explain this last one to you, I'm gonna say you don't need to be doing this if you don't feel naturally drawn to do this. This is just something that I started at the beginning of my calisthenics journey, and I know it's one of the main key factors alongside the other things that I've mentioned to you to help me gain 10 kilos of muscle within just a one year period. Whilst also keeping my body fat percentage very, very low, where I look very cut all year round, and I don't do cutting, I don't do bulking whatsoever, I'm always doing lean bulking, where I'm reducing my body fat percentage whilst increasing the muscle mass at the same time, which a lot of people believe that you can't do that, but I'm proof that you can do that with my own calisthenics journey. And yeah, the fifth reason is, with intermittent fasting daily. If you don't know about this, I do have a video talking about the 16-8 intermittent fasting method and how to do it for serious weight loss, which I'll put a link for a video up above. Also, if you're someone that's interested in one meal a day, which I actually do, I used to do two meals a day, but I do one meal a day and have done for quite some time now. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link for that up above. And if you wanna see what I eat, which is an abundance of calories, within one sitting with one meal a day, normally around 3,000 calories or so. I'll put a link for a playlist up above that shows you many different videos of what I am eating fully and I explain it all to you in detail and show you all the food as well. So you may be wondering, why is it so good for increasing your muscle mass with calisthenics in the shortest period of time possible and also long term as well? Well, there is so many scientific studies that have been done out there that show time and time again, intermittent fasting in men, for example, increases testosterone levels anywhere from 200 up to 400%, and in females around 130%. Human growth hormone in females by about 1,300%, 2,000% up to that, should even say for men. It massively makes your fat storage hormone, insulin, go really low. It makes a hormone as known as glucagon go up, which is a hormone that allows your body to burn its own body fat as fuel. And whilst you're in that fasted state, after about six to eight hours after your last meal, your body starts to go into a fat burning mode where it is burning its own body fat as fuel. And because your insulin's really low, it's not actually gonna make you gain fat. It is literally impossible. So yeah, this is something that I've studied so much and I have so much experimentation with and I've just seen it work for me so effectively for gaining muscle mass and so many other people out there as well, but helping me keep a really low body fat percentage at the same time because you see a lot of people when they're growing their muscles, a lot of time they end up with a lot of fat as well. So yeah, it's just helped me keep that lean, ripped or even shredded body as some people call it. And the brilliant thing that I found with it is you don't need to count your macros at all or track it at all. You don't need to restrict 
calories whatsoever and also you can eat any type of diet that you want with whether it's two meals a day or one meal a day with intermittent fasting methods there's many other different ones out there as well but they're the main ones that i am aware of and have the most experience with so it's really one of the ultimate weight loss hacks out there but also one of the most amazing natural and free ways to maximize your muscle growth at the same time and it's brilliant because you don't have to count your macros track them or restrict your calories you don't have to change your diet if you want it i always recommend trying to incorporate as much plant-based whole foods into your diet as much as possible because they're high in water content high in fiber they're rich in micro and they just help optimize your mental health and physical health holistically and for me i want to have the most amazing dream body possible that i've managed to achieve and sustain still until this current moment and i will continue to do so forward but also i want to be optimizing my health and longevity at the same time so eating those plant-based foods help me but there's certain people out there such as blake to one that's around 40 years old that lost so much weight with eating one meal a day on around 4,000 calories of complete junk food. I don't recommend you necessarily go and follow his dietary advice, but yeah, he's someone that shows that you can still keep a relatively low body fat percentage whilst increasing your muscle mass without having to have a very massive reduction in your calories where you can actually eat an abundance of calories. Unlike what a lot of people in the weight loss and fitness and diet industry will tell you and make you believe based on their own opinions and if you're someone that wants to just learn as much information as you can on how to start doing intermittent fasting and get it work the best for you i put a link for a playlist up above where i have loads of informational educational videos on this subject that you can watch and learn from me specifically to help you embark on this journey actually sustain it long term where you feel the best on it to reduce your body fat percentage to optimize your health and maximize your muscle mass at the same time or optimizing your hormone production and your cognitive health energy and mood as well so that's it for this video if you have any questions leave them down below if you like the video like it down below give us a thumbs up please share this video with anyone that you think would like to learn about the five different reasons that i shared with you in this video as to why they may not be growing muscle when doing calisthenics when they're actually wanting to grow muscle and go in the direction of gaining and maintaining the muscular body that they desire and if you haven't already click that subscribe button down below to receive a lot more calisthenics workout and progression and informational videos intermittent fasting one meal a day informational educational videos what I eat in a day and what I do in a day and also many videos telling you why I do or don't do many things as well. So if those type of videos sound good to you, make sure you click that subscribe button down below and you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded and have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic and go and get those gains. Peace.